Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Rock. And now, Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to your Acts Ministry podcast. Today is January 31st, the last day of the first month of the year. And it's been a good month. It has been a real good month. It's something about focusing on the Lord that seems to just slow time time down. And we need that to happen. We don't need to wake up and, re- and, and, and say, wow, the whole month passed and it doesn't seem like I accomplished much. It's one, it's one thing about consecration and fasting that helps you to focus on every minute, every second of the day. Because, let's face it, when you are fasting and consecrating, the time doesn't seem like it goes by fast until you really get into the spirit of the living God. And that's a good thing. We're so used to waking up in the middle of the year, waking up, and months and days have passed. And that is because we have not paid attention. We have not paid attention. But when you focus and you understand what time it is, you know when you are supposed to eat and that time goes by very very slowly so we are here at the last day of the month of January and I want to talk to you today because for some of us the month has not gone according to the way you planned it and I told you that this year is going to be a totally different year it's not going to be a year that you fall back and you quit and you stop it's going to be a year that you persevere you keep moving forward. You do not allow anything to keep you from moving forward this year in 2019. So I want to talk to you today about two things, two questions I want to ask you. And the first question I want to ask you is where are you? Where are you? And the second question that I want to ask you is what are you doing there or here? Where are you and what are you doing there? Now, these are two questions that the Lord asked in the Bible. He asked Adam, where are you? And he asked Elijah, what are you doing here? So I want to just look at those two questions and bring it to light to where we are right now in the last day of the month of January. Where are we? Now, let me tell you that in the month of December, something happened in our home. A water pipe burst in the wall. And for a whole month, for all of the month of January, we was displaced out of our bedroom. So it seemed as though we lost about 30 days. Now, I told you last year, going into this year, what the enemy does, he tries to do something to steal your whole year. What do you mean steal your whole year? Well, he tries to frustrate you. He tries to do things to throw you out out of rhythm. I'm a very rhythmatic person. And the enemy will attack you to get you out of rhythm so he can steal from you. Steal from you? Absolutely. Steal time from you. Steal your zeal your energy, your thrust that you had coming into this year. He's after that. He's trying to steal that. So let me tell you that the first month of this year was like no other month we have had as far as a level of distraction, I would say. It was an incredible month of distraction from a pipe in a pipe bursting in a wall and having to remove all the carpet and the floor and, uh, and so forth. But God had already given us a word for that. He had already told us what would happen if we got behind what he would do. Divine intervention to catch up. But I don't want to talk about that right now. I want to go to Genesis chapter 3, and it's in verse number 9 that we find this question that God asked Adam. It says, Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? 
Adam, where are you? So that's what I'm saying. I'm saying to all of us today, this last day of January, you have to survey where you are this year. We're not going to wait to the end of the year. We're not going to be get, become frustrated and quit and throw in the towel and say, well, I knew something was going to happen. Hey, things happen to all of us, but that doesn't mean that we should quit or give up. So that's Genesis 3 and 9. Adam, where are you? That's the first question that I want to ask. But it's not, only, it's not the first, I mean, it's the first, but it's not the last one. In the book of 1 Kings, in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19, and verse number 13, there is another question that God asked Elijah. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. It says, so it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle, went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? So think about that. In Genesis, Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 9. God asked Adam, where are you? In the book of 1 Kings, chapter number 19, God asked Elijah in verse 9 of chapter 19, what are you doing here? We're going to talk about that. And we're going to make it applicable to us today. It's going to make it applicable to us on the 31st day of the month of January in the year 2019. God says to Adam in Genesis 3 and 9, where are you? Where are you? Now you must understand something. God knew where he was. God knew that. God is omniscient. He was not asking for information. He was asking for Adam to reflect upon what had happened to him. So what he's asking us today, this last day of the first month of the year, is where are you? He want to know where we are. He want to know where we are, not because he doesn't know, but he's asking his question so that we will evaluate. So we would take time to look around and to evaluate the first 31 days of this month. Where are you? When you look at Adam, God asked him, where are you? He is going to tell God in a minute where he was, even though I don't know if Adam actually knew the consequences of his actions, what he had started in motion. Couldn't have known because it will only be a few years from now that his first son will kill his second son. Cain is going to kill Abel because of the decision that Adam made here to disobey God. So the Lord God called to Adam. Adam is sin. He's eaten from the forbidden tree. He says, where are you? Adam says in verse 10, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Now I want you to think about that. Where is Adam? He's in fear. He's in fear. He's living in fear. Now, he's gone from complete peace to fear and terror in a perfect place. He's still in Eden 
but he is living in fear, terror, horror. And he says, he says, I was afraid. So I, I, and I hid myself. So he's in fear. Not only is he afraid, but he's hiding himself from the only person that can help him. He's hiding himself from God. What a lesson. What a lesson. That when we do stumble, when we do fall, the last person that we need to hide from or try to hide from is God. Adam is covered with fig leaves. Fig leaves. So he's gone from a perfect world to a world of fear and a word world of hiding. So last day of this month, if we have gone into fear, if we feel that we're we're naked and we're hiding, what I'm saying to you today and to all of us is that we have to come out. No, it wasn't the, the type of month that you planned. And the devil is preaching to you what I said he was going to preach to you. He's saying to you right now, what's going to make this year any different from any other year? And not just that, he's saying, I told you so. He's saying, I told you. I told you that this year wasn't going to be any different. See, he's talking, but he's a liar. He's a liar. And what's going to make this year different from any other year is the divine knowledge that God has given you knowledge, knowledge. Hosea says, my people, or God speaking through the prophet Hosea, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. But you have knowledge. You know what is going on. You know that you have come under attack. You know some things have happened. And, and no, you're not where you thought you would be right now, but you're not going to quit. You're going to get up and you're going to move forward in this year because this is going to be the best year of your life. And everything that has happened to you to this point have been a plan of the enemy. An enemy uh, the enemy has planned an attack and he's landed some blows. He's shot some fiery arrows, but it will not be how you start. It will be how you finish. So Adam is in fear. He's in fear and, and he's hiding from God. And God says something to Adam in verse 11. He says, who told you that you were naked? Now, that's what I want to ask you. Who told you this year was going to be like, in, be like the other years in your life? Who told you that this year was going to be a failure? Who's telling you that, that you need to stop dreaming? That you need to just take life for what it is. And what it is is that you're never going to be anything in this life. You're never going to accomplish what you thought you could have accomplished. But he's a liar. He's a liar. So when you look at fear, that's false evidence appearing to be real. F-E-A-R, fear, false evidence, appearing real. So in other words, it's a lie. Fear is a lie. It is saying something that is not divinely true. So he says, I was, I was naked and I hid myself. I'm, I'm hiding because I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed. So I am hiding. But God says now, who told you that you were naked? Now, what God is getting, getting at is that he didn't create us with the spirit of fear. Remember? Remember what Paul says to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. He says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So, God did not give Adam or Eve the spirit of fear. This is something that the enemy brought in. And he brought it in to attack them, to make them feel as though they were complete failures and they would never, never 
amount to anything. That their life was over. You might as well go into hiding because you're going to live with this shame and this guilt all of your life because of what you have done. But I want to tell you something, brothers and sisters, that in verse 15, the Bible says God gives them a prophecy. And he says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Now he's talking to Satan. He's talking to the one that has deceived them, the one that has distracted them. God says to him that there is somebody coming that is going to bruise your head. Yeah, you might bruise his heel, but he's going to destroy you. And that person that he's speaking of here is Jesus Christ. So I'm telling you that the Lord knew exactly what kind of month you was going to have uh, in the month of January. He knew. He knew all the distraction. That's why he was telling you ahead of time, the enemy is coming to steal, kill, and destroy. So he's come, and he wants us to believe that he's stolen the whole month, and we might as well quit on the year because things happened that were out of our control, and we might as well stop and give up. But that's not going to happen this year. You're going to fight like you have never fought before, and you're not going to blame other people or other situations. Blame is not it. Excuse is not it. This is a no excuse year. This is a year that we understand that God has given us grace and mercy, and we're going to plow on and plow through it. I want you to stay tuned because we're going to talk about this again on tomorrow. And by the way, tomorrow will be the first day of the month of February, the first day of the month of February. Stay tuned. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. Morning Glory begins at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday School begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. At our Conway location, Morning Glory begins at 10 a.m. Sunday School begins at 10.30 a.m. Worship service begins at 11.30 a.m. On Thursday, our Bible class begins at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank 